Good evening and welcome to the 2022 Spokane International Film Festival. This is our discussion of A Good Enough Day with director, actor Trevor St. John, producer Lorna St. John, and producer, cinematographer Don Hamilton. Thank you for joining me tonight to talk about uh, this wonderful Spokane film. Um, if you could, Trevor, um, talk about the origin of the film for us a little bit and how you decided to why this story now, kind of uh, the origin story of A Good Enough Day. Well, uh, um, it really starts with, uh, with Don saying, hey, if, uh, if you guys can come up with something that, that, is, uh, that is suitable, that, uh, that we can control and actually produce uh, ourselves, our, ourselves meaning within the family, um, uh, within our means, uh, then let's, let's go. And so he uh, kind of uh, um, kind of laid down the gauntlet for us. And, uh, and then I went to my cousins, Brett, uh, Clothier Sharman and Graham Sharman. And I said, so um, here's what we need to do. We need to work within some limitations, um, uh, budgetary limitations. And the biggest things that, um, that uh, inflate budgets are uh, locations um, and lots of actors, um, wardrobe, things like that. And so we said, Let's, we've got this wonderful set already, the studio. And, uh, and within the studio, you have um, little sets, uh, rooms that, can, that, that are wildly different than the, the previous room. And uh, so we said, our story has to be set in the studio. And we had no idea what, what that story was gonna be. We said, it has to be set in the studio and the obvious choice, well, let's make it about a photographer. Well, that's just a premise, or that's just a character, what he does, so what's the story? And Graham, well, okay, we went all went our separate ways and just a spitball uh, uh, come up with a brainstorm. And uh, Graham came back and said, what if it was, uh, I don't know if, uh, how much I want to give away the story, but uh, well, what the hell? Um, what if it was, uh, what if it was a, this person's last day on earth? And uh, he knew it and he's, he's about to, uh, um, have a doctor friend of his at the end of the day help him assist him in his su on suicide so um we said about and we oh, i just love that that idea the other thing is that it, it satisfies the limitations that we put on ourselves it's it's going to take place in one day so there's not very many wardrobe changes and mm -hmm. most and we and obviously the set was there and it was going to be me and just to just the bare minimum of uh, supporting characters. And uh, so we really set out to, um, to uh, uh, layer and complexify the, that, that kind of simple story and have it take place over, you know, a, a feature length film. So, uh, but it started with Don. It started with Don saying, hey, come on, let's, let's go. If you want to go, let's go. And, uh, and us, us <laughs> making good on it. Don, would you like to confirm this story? This sounds oh, like your reputation true. of being a go-getter and a doer. Well, the thing is that it's a, I think it's say more than a, a COVID project, you know, like other people have had their COVID projects. Oh, by the way, everybody just, so you can see here, the cat, Wee Thomas has just walked on the, on the table. <laughs> but anyway, he may, he may turn this thing off if he gets really pushy. But anyway, uh, yeah, I said, let, let's, do this, you know, during the, the pandemic that we're all in year three of, uh, obviously it's a, had a huge impact on all of us. And we developed a, a, we stayed busy throughout. We became expert in live streaming events. And mm -hmm. uh, in fact, the, the premise of the uh, opening of the film is, is an example of the sort of live streaming thing that, that we have done. And um, so we'd, we'd been working on these projects and, gotten into this sort of place and i said well okay why don't we make a movie i mean we've talked about this before let's let's do it and we have to do it within the confines of like forever was saying budget and all that but also in the in the confines of, of covid and i can remember this that when we first started talking about this uh 
like so many COVID projects, it was all going to be shot with nobody anywhere near each other. We were going to send mm -hmm. cameras to, you know, as you know, the story is revealed through a number of phone calls. Mm -hmm. And we were imagining these phone calls where we would actually send a complex camera package to where the actor mm -hmm. lives, talk the actor through how to set it up. And then we would be able to intercut high quality cinema shot in two locations, but the premise being they couldn't be together. But obviously like so much as, as we, when we first said, let's do this thing, the COVID protocols changed, the reality changed. And so we figured out, you know, we actually can safely do this because we're used to safely working in the studio. We have our COVID protocols. Uh, let's just do it as a film. And then, and so we were able to open it up a bit, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, so, so what you see now is I, you know, I like to say that the, the project isn't about COVID, but it takes place in this time that we're all living in right now. There are, there are masks and there is social distance. And um, you know, it's a, it, I'm just thrilled because I had a certain, I wanted to do it as an exercise in filmmaking because frankly, we've got other movies to make. And it's sort of like, let's, let's get this one done and let's prove we can do this. And it turns out, I happen to think it's, it's really kind of interesting. I mean, it's, it's, it's mm -hmm. watchable. Uh, if there's nobody that I've talked to that, I mean, I don't think they're just being nice to me, that it, they, it makes them think and that they make them think a couple days later and they'll call me and say, you know, I just realized. And so the point is that we had the confines of wanting to do it ourselves in the studio we have with the budget we figured we could afford to spend and in the confines of this world in which we're living. And uh, we did it and I'm proud of it. And I hope mm -hmm. it finds an audience. I hope so too, um, Lorna. Um, if you, if I could get you to follow up on that piece in terms of as the producer, like what is the future of the of the film? Has it been going out, and what's been how what's the response been like? Well, we're we're uh, we're working with a, a sales uh, a, a rep for for uh, especially for festivals. He may have even called you. I don't know. Um, and so uh, we've we've had a, a, a few viewers and a couple more. And um, it, it turns out that there are zillions of films out there. And so it's hard to get in festivals. And, and, and uh, we, we appreciate being in SPIP um, because um, it, is, it is a high bar. You can have a really good film. I think we have a good film, but, but still not make the cut because uh, you know maybe it's not the flavor of the week. Um, one of the things that we really wanted to do was to make sure that we had a, a diverse cast. And um, given the restriction of that we're going to work, we talked about make, making Zoom calls and we decided, no, that's just, it's too clunky to make, to have mm -hmm. it be Zoom calls. And so we, we settled on, it's going to be FaceTime calls, only they don't always work because technology fails you. And, uh, but when we did have a Zoom call, we have a Zoom call to a perfectly plausible wife. Um, uh, that, and, the, and, the, and it's interesting because when that Zoom call was made, we really did have the failure, the dropping out of, of the phone. You know, he was calling FaceTime, it dropped out. And so it was, it was really what happened a lot of the things that happened in this film really did happen so but so we did we did have a diverse cast um we had fun finding that diverse cast it was it was really a good experience and um and, and we think that we through this phone call business made some in some sort of intriguing um scenarios um, we were mm -hmm. really happy with how that worked out you know one mm -hmm. thing i jump in here and i don't know if if people know this because it, it it's true that the way this thing was designed was that the writers uh, uh, withheld the script, the totality of the script from the actors. The actors all knew what their backstory were, what was and that they were going into an improvisational conversation with Trevor's character. And people sort of knew, again, what the backstory was and where they wanted to enter the scene and then where they wanted to get out of the scene. But those phone calls, those were one take, you know? And, and so like Lorna says, we were very lucky to have captured a bunch of lightning in a bottle, including the technical failures when, uh, you know, it froze just right, said poor connection, <laughs> dropped out. I mean, it was, you know, so we, 
we got away with murder. I, I mean, the, the, uh, the, the thing is that we did get the whole story and, and, and being able to see it and say, yeah, there's the whole story and not really having any regrets. The improvisational stuff really, really worked. Um, that said, uh, the, the, the scene with, uh, with Cam, the young uh, photography student, mm -hmm. that ended up wanting to be like the other things, an improvisational thing. But it ended up that when we looked at the first takes, it just wasn't there at all. And we ended up hmm. calling him back. And that thing is the exact opposite of, of improvisation. It, that was old school filmmaking, one shot at a time, over and over and mm -hmm. over again. We took four days. You know, we kept bringing him back and doing different pieces of it. But, the, but at the same time, it fits into the broader picture. It's not jarring that the thing that took four days to shoot it, it seems to play with the improvisational stuff and I'm just proud of the cast and the method and it's always know. risky working with animals and children. That's always. what WC Field said for sure. Yeah. The other thing um, that was really uh was uh serendipity was that we knew that we wanted to get out of the out of the studio just a little bit. And so we got uh, had found a, a, a plausible reason to be in the church next door. And the church secretary is really the church secretary. Mm -hmm. And so, and she just turned out to be a good, a really good improvisational actor. She was really, really natural. She was very, I think, very empathetic. And, and uh, so I think we got a really wonderful performance there and it was in a beautiful set. So, so that was a, a, a really, you know, like I said, it was serendipity. Well, it's, it, it, it's, it, she is real and her the way this thing was teed up is we we got her her truth you know and it was a nice uh addition to this guy's story anyway i was real pleased with the way it went down the um the the thing that struck me when i saw it at the fox was how you had found a story that is timeless in a way and about the failure of human beings to connect with one another and but that how that wove into the challenges that covid puts on top of those things and so this is, you know, coming from a background and studying media, it's like, oh, you can pick up your phone and you can call anybody, but it's different. I mean, you can pick up a call or, or go visit them is a very different experience. And at what point does being able to call them at any moment kind of make you feel less urgent about seeing them really? Um, and how maybe that failure of connection was really woven through the film. I'm sure that that was something that you thought about, Trevor, in terms of, um, the, just the whole the yeah whole failure to connect in a in a literal and figurative yeah way i think that that was what the whole story was about was was this man's um disconnection from um intimacy for, uh with the people that he he loved that, that were left in his life after his son died and um and so that's really what it was that's it's him trying to in the course of a few hours reconnect in some meaningful way uh, this is the last time he's going to be able to and um and then the so that 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 literal um uh difficulty in connecting um uh, only exacerbated the problem uh, mm -hmm. and um the covid was the uh you know that that idea that you have to keep a distance so it was, uh, it was kind of a character in and of itself it was uh, almost covid was like a allegorical character and if you want to think of it that way you know you must mm -hmm. you must stay away and mm -hmm. um so all these everything is was pointing one of the rules and in, in screenwriting is that you if you if you if your character sets out to to accomplish a goal your job as a screenwriter is to is to make it as impossible as possible for that person. so so it helped that we used covid and uh and that there were there were uh, problems in connections and in, in internet connections or whatever and and uh, mm -hmm. um, and phone calls. So yeah, it worked. It worked out nice that way. I, it, the moment that really drove home the film for me, because you did this wonderful. This this is just a wonderful slow burn. The way that this just is like, okay, he's trying. Okay, he's trying. He's trying, he's trying, and other people are trying to reach him. Mm -hmm. But the, the moment when Julia gives her, her call is just, 
it's heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. It is so engaging the way that she emotes over the phone. It's, Mm -hmm. I I don't, I I mean, I could, uh, I've seen a lot of, Josephine, 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 sorry. Yeah, Josephine. Her, I was thinking, her, I her it was sister Julia, Julia is also an actor. It's a family yeah, it's, of talented people. So. It, it, exactly. So, but Josephine is just, I, I, I mean, just the moments that she is there mm-hmm. were so moving. Could you mm-hmm. speak about that moment? Uh, well, that's interesting uh, to uh, to Don's uh, point earlier about the fact that we uh, uh, kept uh, the script. Uh, from the actors, I, you know, I, I as one of the, the uh, co-writers uh, knew everyone's um, everyone's story, uh, but I did not know. I was the only one who didn't know um, what was going on with Josephine's character. Brett and Graham uh, withheld that information from me. They worked together, just the two of them, on that, and. So I had no idea what was what she was going to say in any way. I had no information. Um, mm. Only that she was. Uh, uh, only that her mother had told me earlier that she's not doing well. So what you're seeing, is, what you what you see in the film, is is me in real time discovering this information. And uh, that one, that one, you know, the other ones we could have. Uh, done other takes and indeed we could have done another take of that uh, of that particular scene but we really wanted to get that one in in one you know because the other ones i the other ones were structured mm-hmm. the other ones i knew what information was going to come i knew what I, what information i was going to give but this one you know that's why i just shut up for most of it because i because it was so because it was powerful i wanted to, to you know and it was uh, it was so moving that i that you know, you just let her go. And what was I going to do anyway? What was the character going to say? There's no one's going to, you know, can't say anything in that in that moment. Did they tell you, Don? I mean, so that you could think about the setups that you needed for that moment, or how did that no, work? No, I, I, I was oh, okay. blissfully ignorant. And, it, you know, it was, uh, I mean, we certainly blocked through the blocking, you know, and uh, uh, I had, uh, you know, Trevin Spencer was the camera operator on that thing. And we had, you know, just a little, you know, t- t- technical things. When he was, when Trevor was on the phone with somebody, we intentionally went to handheld shaky cam, as it were. And then I'm not the first one to invent this. It, it adds a little tension when the camera is, is moving, you know, just a little bit. Other times when he's not on these intense phone calls, the camera's floating on a gimbal. And so what we would do is we established the visual vocabulary and then I'd work with Trev and the operator and we'd say, we're gonna go from here to here to here to here. And then we had, so we had uh, Trevin holding the camera. We had Matt VL AC with a wireless follow focus. And you know he was on a, hmm. on a monitor constantly doing the, the, the follow focus. And you know again, we got away with murder. One take, freaking one take on these things, uh, you know, I was, you know, just really pleased. <laughs> um, Trevor, um, from, again, from the genesis of the film to where it landed, mm-hmm. um, did it, did it kind of, Don is, is very happy with the end result, but how do you, what were your sensations in terms of um, in terms of the film? I personally, I I cannot look at my own work and be objective, and mm. I cannot look at my own work and almost and really appreciate it unless I have totally forgotten it. Like there's always something that I'm like I should have done this, or I should have done that, or I should have done this. But but then the, there's also the side of me that's like, well, here's what I learned. Yes. From this, and how does this project stack up in terms of in terms of your I don't know feelings about it, I guess. You mean uh, what I, what, what, uh, how I just felt about it, uh, the, the finished product, is that what you mean? Yeah, in a, yeah. In a sense, I think so, yeah. I love it, I mean, I, I'm really proud of it. And, I'm, and um, I don't, uh, I have a hard time being uh, <laughs> blowing sunshine up, up my own, you know, you know what, so <laughs> I, um, I'm just I'm I'm uh, not hard on myself, but I won't but I won't bullshit myself or anyone else. Mm-hmm. And so I think um, 
I think it's a really fine film. I really do. Mm-hmm. And I think um, uh, I, I think that the the story is is rich. I think it's beautifully shot. I think it's um, I think all the the performances are great. And uh, I think that we um, we treated the audience with respect, mm-hmm. which is what well, my main what the 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 three of us, um, uh, myself, Brett, and Graham. That that's one element of of movies these days that is sorely lacking. Um, mm-hmm. Is that they they the filmmakers, um, screenwriters, oftentimes just don't give the audience the credit for being um, savvy, uh, uh, you know, um, world, um, what would you say? Just that, that, they, that they know the, what, what life is like, that they are, they don't need to be led by, by the nose. They can intuit things, you know, mm-hmm. they, can, they have in- instincts in, about situations um, and can understand them without uh, being, being told anything, you know? So, we really wanted to give them the utmost respect. We don't have to tell mm-hmm. you any of this. It's going to be, and also they're going to, they're, they're, they are more patient. Audiences are more patient than we give them credit for being. Mm-hmm. Um, and that we don't have to have, we don't have to front load everything. Here's the, everything that's going on with this character. So you don't have to wonder at any moment what's going on. You know, that's, I can't stand that. And so we gradually, we did our best to how long can we go? before we reveal this mm. and can we push it to this all the way to here before we reveal this so there is a there is so we wanted them to be compelled but also needed to needed to keep watching because they they have to know the need to know thing i'm interested in this i'm not so confused that i'm i, I you've glossed me so i'm going to turn it off mm-hmm. I, this is compelling in what i'm seeing but i must know more mm-hmm. and uh so that's what and I think we accomplished that. I really I really don't really proud of that element, too. Mm-hmm. I like the phone call with his sister where it's clear that he's he's trying to tell her he's planning to tell it, tell her that he's not going to be around anymore and uh, he can't get it out. And she actually tumbles into it herself, right. but he can't admit it. He, he, he just glosses right over it and gets on because he just he can't do it. He's he's becomes a, a coward at that point. He mm. just can't do it. And um, the, the best he can do is say, I care about you. He, he's just really bound up. That sets the, the mm. tone for what this character is going through. He's really bound up. You know, yeah, I'm, very, I'm quite proud of it. I mean, I really am. And I just, I just if, I, if I weren't, I mean, I would I would admit it. Uh, maybe not in this right now. <laughs> I didn't mean to ask. That. I, I would have. I would have. Part part I would have privately told Donald and Lorna, ah, it's, it's no good. But um, <laughs> but I'm I'm uh, I'm I'm really proud of it. Yeah. The thing that that also um, j- just a little insight in this is the astonishment. It was a total of eight and a half days, and without getting into uh, hmm. too much detail, there was a lot of drama. In the very first couple of days when we had sudden personnel changes and mm. and 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 there's there's drama on every theater every project i've ever been on but we kind of got like through this crucible of drama in the first 48 hours and then it's like this crack team intuitive sensing each other's moves because if we hadn't you know, you know whether we needed mm-hmm. the full uh, drama before the the thing or not, but but we did have the the crack team that that. Hey, now now it's the Godfather. Let us be frank. Never want to. <laughs> I put the cats in my lap. What am I supposed to do? But anyway, uh, uh, but uh, but but so just again this 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 process. You know, Trevor's worked in this industry a long time. I mean, he's, you know, and, and so he's used to being on real sets with lots of people and everybody doing their job. And here we are on this tiny set with just the smallest number of people because of the budget and the COVID and everything else and more than one hat. But we ultimately got to the point where we were able to do business. And I'm just remembering that, again, you got, you got Trevor is on 
the set of course acting and directing and doing all of this. And then I'm there as the director of photography. And then next to me is Brett Clothier Sharman, who is one of the three writers of the thing. And we got into this rhythm where, for example, Trevor was saying at the end of the, the, the scene, wonderful, powerful scene with Josephine Keefe, you know, do we need a second take? And it's one of these things where we got into the rhythm where I'd look at Brett and I'd say story and he'd say good and he'd say picture and I'd say good. So, you know, the <laughs> DP saw it work. The story guy said, yeah, we moved the agenda as we needed to. So if I'm happy and he's happy, we're on the wrong set, move to the next set, you know, and, and, and it really worked out. I'm just proud of the whole experience. So it helped this, to have a, uh, have uh, absolutely no set dressing required. Mm -hmm. no yeah, the set, set was what it was. Yeah. Oh, I also got to say the, the other thing. The studio really and it and and it and it was it was ready. We didn't we we didn't even we hardly even cleaned up. It was just it was ready to go. You know, in all of this, we haven't mentioned Jennifer Gatz. Yes. I I don't know if you know who Jennifer Gatz is, but she is one of the producers. She's not in this mm -hmm. Zoom room right now, but Jennifer Gatz is a real producer. Jennifer Gatz worked season after season on Z Nation. She was mm. just, um, uh, when she worked in second AD, I've, but I don't even know exactly what, but on the, the, the Casey Affleck thing, you know, she worked mm. on that big show and she was able to bring such a level of professionalism and experience to our little family operation. Here again, every member of the team, we could not have done it without all of them. And, and she was just a huge thing that, you know, yeah. suddenly made the whole thing pull and look real yeah. and be yeah. real. It was terrific. Yeah, I, I, I paid the bills and worked with Screen Actors Guild, but she made it happen. She, she made everything happen. Absolutely. Absolutely. So this, that was the question that I was wanted to ask you, Lorna. So now that you've made a film under these circumstances and you have minimized personnel to even below minimum, is it, is it tempting as a producer to say, well, why don't we make another one of those? Um, yes. Or what was it, or is it like, well, I don't know if that was the way that we should do things for, for the rest of all, you know, for the rest well, of time. But I mean, there, there will be that, that push and pull. I mean, as soon as somebody comes in and says, we, Italian neorealists do it this way and it costs a fraction of what it costs to do. So maybe we should make films like they do now. Um, is you know is do you feel that pull of you know we got this amazing I, I, result? I, really, I like the idea that that we control everything. That doesn't mean we won't do something that requires a little bit um, uh, bigger everything. Uh, uh, we have some scripts kind of in in development, and um, a couple of them do require a lot of locations and a lot of cast and a lot of, of pre production mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. And some of them don't. So um, we're we're happy to go either way. I, I would I would have uh, ten Jennifer Gats if I could get them if we do a big project. <laughs> yes, Trevor. What 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 are I mean in terms of the style of the shoot? I mean, was that something that you'd want to imitate moving forward, or was it something that you would say, well, I feel like maybe we went too far, or was just about right? Or I mean, well, the more it, you you know, yeah, it was it was uh, I could. Uh, I could stand have a, a couple more people. I mean, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I just think the vol. Yeah, I just because there was everyone had to wear so many hats. I mean, it, everyone was terrific. It was a. Uh, it was really, it was really great fortune uh, that we were able to to pull it off, and we and 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 Donna Lorna collected a. a well, let me just jump in here. Bit. Yes, it was great fortune, but it was a high wire act with no net. <laughs> and it right. could have been that we got to the end of the eight days and we couldn't tell a story. So, right. I mean, we got away with murder. Yeah, yeah, okay. And I don't All know right. that I'd ever yeah. want to try it again and guarantee that I can get away with murder again. Yeah, like right. You know, Trevor said, just a few more people. Yeah, just a few more people ought to do it. <laughs> yeah, but I don't, but, 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 but it did teach me that you can, um, it's, it's hard, but it can be done with, with uh, I mean, that's as bare bones as I've ever I've ever been on. I mean, I've never been on a set that with that few people. I mean, I'm in small sets, independent films, something like that. But that's that's unheard of. Um, so I, I would, yeah, I think some modest. Um, I, would, I, don't, I hate to use the word improvement. What would I? What would you say? Because because I, I that would 
that implies yeah. that it was it was uh, it was not a good uh, set, but but just some more uh, um, normal, uh, more typical type of uh, uh, set. Well, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be a two hundred million dollar uh, Universal picture type of, with where there are one hundred and fifty people. You know, so mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be that. But I think it would just be a lot smoother. Taking the uh, pressure off. Taking the yeah. pressure off a few people. Yeah. Yeah. But 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 as far as uh, but that's as far as the, the the crew, but as far as the the um the scope of the of the picture, I'd li I'd like to keep making these these small films. Mm -hmm. Um these in these intimate small stories. I I really and I, and of course controlling the product is really um <laughs> unusual, you know. That's really what you want in the end. That's mm -hmm. what everyone wants. That's the that's the that's the top of the mountain right there. If you mm -hmm. can control, no matter what the size of the production, if you can control it, you've got something. Yeah. Well, well one of the other um, elements of this of this film was that it, it nearly edited itself because of the way we shot it, because of the of the the way it, the structure. Um, it, it was it was. Uh, it was pretty straightforward about the way it needed to be edited. Well, yeah, there was a lot of I, I remember choices and I remember fights. Sure, but and, sure, but it but, 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 um, but it, it's true that you know, yeah. well, we got one take of this scene. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But but yeah. but so often, I mean, in some cases it was one camera and one take, but like in the church, it was three cameras. So um, you know, in the case of the church, it was one take, it was three cameras. But there are a few lines that are on the cutting room floor, and mm -hmm. there was a version of it that was much shorter. But you know, this whole question of how much uh, of, of, of that wanted to be there, you know, I mean, it was a, a live debate, and 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 so there were several versions of that scene. Great. Yeah. Um, so I I promised. Lorna and Don that I would ask this question before you were in the room, Trevor, but um, tell me what it's like to be part of the first family of film in Spokane. <laughs> are you, did you ask, are you asking me this? Yeah, well, I'm asking oh, all oh. of you, but I didn't prepare you for the question, but oh, I did oh, ask oh. Lorna and Don and Don was like, I don't know if that, if that's true, but I don't well, know I who think else it's it would fantastic. be. I, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I love it. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's been, um, a long time coming. I mean, we've been threatening to do this for 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 ten, at least ten years. And we've been talking about we got all this. We got all these toys. Don's yeah. got all the toys, you know. Um, and uh, uh, we just need to come up with the uh, the means to do it and the right story to tell. And uh, um, it just so happens that that Don is a master cinematographer, and my mom is uh, you know can do anything. Um, so you've got, uh, uh, so you've got a great, you've great, great, uh, uh, skilled people. It's not just, oh, Hey, I, I happen to have this stuff. I don't know how to use it or I'm not very capable producer or whatever. Like, like my mom, like I said, she can, she can, you know, whatever role you need on the set, she can do it. So, um, that would be one thing, but they're also, you know, so they're capable. And uh, and my cousins are really talented writers and understand story and understand the human condition. Um, and uh, uh, there are some really extremely talented people in town, mm -hmm. uh, talented crew members. Uh, Matt is a was a, was a Matt Biel is a joy to, to work with, and um, everybody Jennifer. Oh, oh, it was a. It wasn't lacking at all, so I I, I thought it was great to be a uh, to be a part of the first family. It is, and I'd like to do more. Well, we all want to do more. That's for sure. We we we're not coming away from this saying, "Well, that's the end of that." Yeah. You know, I... Well, <laughs> there are a lot of family members involved. Yeah. There, there. In addition to to the three of us, there are the two other writers, and Matt Viel is Don's nephew. So other than that, there's nobody related. Right. Right. And, and I got my granddaughter coming up. So uh, <laughs> yeah. anyway, teach all the techniques, pass them on. Mm -hmm. Why not? That's great. Yeah, well, that's terrific. Um, 
I don't know. It seems like it, it just such an amazingly satisfying project. Um, and, you know, Don threw down the gauntlet and said, let's meet all these restrictions. We got eight plus days. See what we get. And to get what you got, even without the eight day thing, is just astonishing. I mean, okay. Don, your work, your work is always like your your work always looks great. Like the symphony stuff that you've done, the, the things you've done for the symphony. I'm like, oh, Don, of course Don shot that. It looks amazing. Um, so you've been just an, an amazing community sponsor, like to step forward for the things that you've done and to and to do while you're doing that to make a feature length film is just is, it just blows my mind. Well, what'd you do this weekend? Uh, I, 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 I would tell you, but you'd, you, you, would, you, you would feel like you hadn't done anything with your life. But what I did was I, you know, the last week I made a, I made a feature length film with my wife and son and some, and, you know, and, and some nephews, you know, it just, it, it boggles the mind. Yeah. He also ran to Costco too during that time. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I did want to thank you for sharing the film with uh, with with Spiff and for sharing the film with me and for taking the time to sit down with me. And if you had any final thoughts, I would love to hear them. But I, I mean, you're really throwing down the gauntlet, not only for yourselves, but for the rest of the community. Like I had a script. I had nine days. You can do it. Well, you know, it can it be really done that that that. Everybody is so lucky, I mean. Some people can actually shoot a movie with this. You know, it, mm -hmm. it used to be that if you had a story to tell, if you couldn't get the bare minimum of like $50,000 for film and processing, you know what I'm saying? But now if you've got an idea, the hardware's out there and, well, you know, and, and I don't have to tell you, this is a filmmaking community. I mean, there's, there's stone pros doing big shows and there's youngsters coming up and doing great things. And what I said to Trevor and my, and my family, if we don't seize this opportunity with all this uh, ability and the capability that we have, shame on us. And so I'll <laughs> throw that gauntlet down to other filmmakers that may be watching this. If you don't seize the moment, shame on you. So, Actually, it would have been seven days, but we brought the boy back. So there yeah, you go. We, we did have to get that one shot shot a little harder. But it was worth it. I'm very, very pleased. He was a great kid, just a really great kid. Yeah. Oh yeah, he'll be he'll be back. Oh sure, I suspect doing some other stuff. Mm -hmm. He he's got the acting bug. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, he's got it now. So, but he he wasn't trying to act, so we appreciated that. He was just being really natural. Yeah, he was just right. Well, thank you again. Um, I appreciate it very much, and it's thanks been a for, pleasure. Thanks for too. having us in SPIF. We really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank Can't you. wait till we all Honor. get together next year, the year after. Yeah, we'll yeah. Have the next year. theater together. So, all right. Okay. Once again in thank April. You. Good night, everybody. Thanks, Good night. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Bye. Bye.